Hello, this is Joycelyn Shedler. Actually, these are Joycelyn Shedler hands. And today we are going to do a little bit of underpainting techniques that um, I've learned and just tried over time, different workshops and things. Um, let's first talk about pastel papers that can take a wet underpainting. Um, one of my favorites is the UART. 400 is the grit, oops, upside down, that I prefer. And so I'll be doing an example of that. This is a piece of scrap paper I found. It is actually a watercolor paper called Reeves BFK. This happens to be white. I used this in a workshop and we added pumice gel to it to add texture and I have some of that so we might give that a try today. Um, I also have over here a piece of, um, I don't really call it paper, not sure what this is, I can't recall what it's made up on, but the surface is created by Rita Kirkman, it's colors that she uses, this is a piece that I purchased from her, and I do have the ingredients for creating this base, um, probably won't do it today, but just so that you can have those ingredients. I'll show them to you right now. I know these are the correct ingredients because A, they're on Rita Kirkman's uh, website, but I also um, bought them after taking a workshop with her. So this is the Golden Gel Medium Fine Pumice Gel. Adds a little bit of grit to your paper. I mix this color with that gel. It's the Golden Nickel Azo Yellow. It's a liquid, uh, fluid acrylic, excuse me. Okay, so I mix these two guys, the two that I just showed you, and I think it is a two parts gel to one part color. You can start with that and then adjust it to your liking, and that will make that kind of yellow uh, base color oh, that we saw here. This is my first time to videotape, so hmm, please bear with me. Other products that, um, or another product that I learned in Rita Kirkman's website for underpainting is this Color Fix Fine Tooth Primer. This is the terracotta. She uh, uses a lot to uh, create the darker areas in her underpainting. So I purchased that and I've used it. I like it. I also bought, at the same time, just for a cool color, the, the same product but in an aubergine color. And I've used that as an underpainting um, as well. So that's kind of fun for a cooler underpainting. Anyway, so that's how we build that one. Other products I've used for underpainting are Liquitex, can you see that? Clear Gesso, that's just the just gesso already, just adds texture to the paper, it's, as it says, clear. I can mix it with other um, liquid acrylic colors, and I have a few of those. Oh, here we go, here are the three I have. Red, medium, green, shade, and yellow ochre. Anyhow, you can mix those with this to create a color. I have also used just a watercolor. This happens to be Payne's Gray. I think this is one of the favorites of Albert Handel. That's probably when I picked this up. And of course, mix it with a little bit of water, and I can put it um, down on the paper as well. I have this little kit of watercolors. I've used those in the past just to put a little color onto the paper, so I'm not starting with white or beige. And that, uh, there's the brand back there. Yes. I don't know. 
I either won them as a prize or somebody gave them to me. Anyhow, I have them. And then, of course, um, pastels washed in with alcohol. Um, this is the 91% isopropyl alcohol because it dries really fast. So, uh, less time for your papers to buckle, etc. And with this, I just use, and I'll be uh, showing you this. I have an old, or not an old, but a tray of various hard pastels. Most of them are new pastels or Faber Castell. And um, I use those to lay down some color and then wash it in with the isopropyl alcohol to create the underpainting. And we'll be doing that today. Now, let's go back to talking about paper. So I showed you the um, UART 400. I showed you this BFK Reeves. Move that out of the way. I'll also show you um, this is a ampersand pastel board. You can see right there it says pastel board. This particular one is white, which means it could take some underpainting color. I've also set out a piece of white um, pastel mat. I've not used water on pastel mat before, but I read online yesterday and it said yes, it can take it. So I'm going to assume it can. Oh, I'm sorry, this isn't white. This is a little light gray. But anyway, this is pastel mat. One of the surfaces we know cannot, absolutely cannot take wet underpainting is pastel card La Carte pastel paper. La Carte paper is vegetable based and therefore will just melt at the sight of uh, water. <laughs> and if you've used uh, excuse me, this before, it's it's got a nice grit to it and it comes in some colors so Maybe you don't really need an underpainting, but it definitely cannot take a wet underpainting. La carte. No wet paper. It will melt. It will be. It will be have to be thrown away. <laughs> That's what it will be. Have to be thrown away. The other um, surface that cannot take water that pastelists use is velour paper. Can I get that in there? There we go. Velour by this German company. Velour. That's the, the paper that kind of feels like velvet. Also comes in some colors, so you know maybe you don't need to underpaint it. And you won't underpaint it because again, it won't take it. That's velour. So velour is a no water underpainting. No wet underpainting. Okay. This is a sheet of Metiens. I'm probably butchering that. It's by Canson. Canson Metiens pastel paper. This also cannot take water. It could take a little bit. I took a workshop with Mike Beeman, and he did put some 91% alcohol in a spray bottle and put pastel on this kind of paper, and then he moved it around with, with a brush when it was wet. But that is a very light spray, light application. So... Um, you can experiment with it. With it, this uh, paper is not all that expensive, so you can play with that and see if that's something you like. Um, but we'll stick with the safe ones today. Okay, that's that. This is the UART 400 once again, so you can see that. And what I'm going to do is tape it down so it doesn't move. 
So I'm going to be brushing across it with a brush. So I'm just going to barely cover the corners because I really do want to underpaint the majority of this. Okay. Just get the corners down. And I'm just working on a black piece of foam core so that you can see what I'm doing better. That's that's all that is. Okay. So I think what I want to do is just do some um, take some hard pastels and do some mark making on the paper and then wash it in with the 90% alcohol and an old brush. By the way, these are my old brushes. Old and cheap. <laughs> this one I've had for a long time. I use it quite a bit. It's a two inch. Uh, fairly strong bristle. This is a little bit soft to bristle. Three inch. There we go. Sorry. And two inch and one inch. So I have three sizes of that depending on the size of paper I'm working. This is the uh, old house paintbrush here. Um, really old and it's super stiff and so I like to use it a lot. Alright, so things to think about with the underpainting. Um, a lot of times if I think I'm going to be painting green grass, opposite of green grass would be maybe some undercoloring of terracotta or reds or oranges, you know, opposite of the color wheel. Um, and the ground sometimes is brown, brownish red, and then the green really pops on that. So sometimes I can wash the whole paper, or if I know the subject matter, I could do, you know, if I'm doing green, I could do uh, some uh, underpainting of rust, something like this. If my painting's primarily, well, maybe so you can see that better. There we go. Something like that. Um, if I have yellow, maybe I put some purple underneath there. I don't know. I just I like kind of like this. Don't have to color the whole surface. I'm gonna just do the whole thing like that, and maybe I do some little bit brighter. random marks and maybe something a little bit darker Ooh. so this is all warm there we go random marks just random then I will take my empty container and I will take a little bit of this Oops alcohol. Pour that in here. Just a little bit. Don't want to waste, especially in these times when this just have a little bit of this alcohol is all I have. And probably won't be able to get any for a while because of the COVID virus stuff. Anyway, just taking my my small brush because that's really kind of a small piece of paper. And I'm just gonna tap it. In this now. It starts drying out. I'll just dip it a little bit more. And I'm not being really careful about uh, direction. Just kind of smearing it all around. I do have a um, air purifier in my studio here. That helps with dust and stuff like that, but this is really not creating anything. A little bit of odor. I would probably normally do this outside, but since I'm recording this for you guys, I'm doing it inside. It's not that strong. Still working in my little bit of alcohol here. Brushing it around. 
see, nothing to it. So if you haven't tried this yet, just experiment. Um, yeah, I used to be really uh, worried about, will I be able to cover it up? Yes, if you ever worked with black paper, you'll know you can cover it up. <laughs> All right, I think I've covered everything. Smush smashed around. Try not to. I don't mind the brush marks. I kind of like them as a matter of fact. So we've got that. Um, so I could just stop there. I could just be done with that. If I wanted, I could also add in some liquid gesso. I'll just get really experimental here. I'm going to take some liquid gesso and pour that in here. Just a little bit of that texture. And I like that yellow ochre color that I had back here. Yellow ochre. Fluid acrylic. Shook it up. Add a couple of drops. I'll take the same brush I was using before. I'm just stirring it up in there. There you go. That's kind of pretty color. I don't know if it'll show up or not. This is, as we said, an experiment. I just kind of like that yellow kind of color. Adding some more there. Maybe in those areas that I left a little white. I kind of like that. I kind of like it. It's pretty. Probably not showing up so great for you guys, but it's kind of pretty. I like that. I have some left over, so I'm going to grab that uh, white piece of BK Reeves paper that I have. You can see my little color corners here are white. That's okay. Um, I can take my finger, or you know what? I'll just take my little brush, grab those corners so they're not white. Although, they'll probably be covered up with a frame or a mat. I don't worry about it too much. So that's what this um, piece of paper ended up looking like. It's wet, so that's what the sheen is. But when that dries, it'll just be kind of this color. I think it's pretty. I like it. Okay, it turned out well. And I'll set that aside. Like I said, I'm going to grab this uh, piece of BK Reeves paper and uh, kind of pin it down a little bit. Well, I've got this kind of, I'm going to need more. <clears throat> I'm going to add some more of this clear gesso. And I'm also going to add or this yellow. Just mixing it up. Just gonna add some texture to this white paper. It's really kind of pretty. Again, don't have to cover it all. It's kind of fun. Just to smear it around. little goes a long way. Just kind of smishing it around, making weird patterns. Who knows? Maybe they turn out to be uh, flower centers or Busy. That's what that looks like. So that's kind of pretty. And now if I wanted to add some other color, like red, red and yellow, kind of orangey kind of color. Shake it up. Little drops. Um, dawning on me, I probably 
should have a washcloth here or something to wipe my hands on. I'll do that real quickly. Hot blood paint. And that's done. Okay. So what I did is I dropped a couple of red drops into this yellow. I've never have done that before, so we'll see what it looks like. Ooh, it's kind of interesting. Mm. I'm seeing a sun, sunrise, sunset in our future with this underpainting, huh? Joy's working at home. Probably heard a knock on the door. It's my husband. He is working from home during the COVID virus stuff. So we haven't really worked out a system of him not interrupting me. But we will. Looky there. Had some yellow in the brush. Just gonna get that out like that. I'm just kind of playing. And that's what this is. This is this is playing. And um, with the gesso, it's adding some texture. And also with my brush, I'm adding texture. So that will give me some fun texture to play with when I get to uh, when it dries, and when we get back to uh, pasteling. That's kind of pretty too. A lot brighter than the other one. But, uh, let me, gosh, there's just really no way to show this to you without, ugh. It just looks too bright, no matter what I do. Oh, uh, kinda. Anyway, it's not nearly that bright. I think it's the lights overhead that are showing that, but anyway. It's another pretty piece of paper that I can now practice on. Move this out of the way so I can move this out of the way. And uh, I'm do this pastel mat. And the pastel mat comes with a, a sheet of glassine already on it. That's kind of nice. I'm going to take it off so I don't mess it up. And put this back down in my Example space. Okay, there we go. We're almost done with this segment because almost out of this. I can let's see. That's what I'd like to do. Maybe start with some yellow. Pastel is dirty. I like that, that yellow coat. I wanted to lighten this up a bit. That's just a hard pastel. Probably a new pastel. Yellow. There's my phone in there. Take that off. I'm going to add, because this does have some tooth to it, so it doesn't really need as much um, gel. I'm going to add a little bit of that uh, alcohol to it to thin it out just a little bit. And I'm just going back to this color again. I thought it was pretty. I think I like it. I really should have cleaned that pastel because I got some messiness under that. But, ooh, isn't that pretty? I don't know if you can see that, but I really like it. It's really pretty. Ooh, got some red. Ooh, 
I'm liking the surprises I'm catching here. Okay, well, this pastel mat does seem to be taking this thinned out liquid gesso by Liquitex. You don't have to cover the whole thing if you don't want to. But I like it so much I'm going to. I like these red streaks that showed up in here. way you can just do it to you feel like it's something that you like okay so that's all I'm gonna show you with this because um, so I've made like three pieces of underpainted papers the first one um, a little bit darker I still like it it's a good ground cover and this one got a little more red to it, you probably can't really see it. Oh, sorry, that's that uh, paper, the BFK Reeves paper. This one is really kind of cool. I like it. Um, I wish you could see it better. Hmm, I have to figure that out. But it's got like some red streaks. Really kind of pretty. And now that I've taken out from the tape, I see corners, corners, and again. They're probably fine like that, but they're just a little distracting because they're so white. All right, so that's three pa pieces of paper underpainted like that um, pretty quickly. And okay, I just wanted to show you what the papers look like after they've dried. These are the three papers that I toned earlier today. Um, so we can work from right to left I guess. So this is the piece of UART paper that I toned with new pastels and then took 91% alcohol and just colored the piece of paper. Using a brush I just moved the hard pastels around in just a random fashion so I have this kind of marbled effect when I look at it I think this might be what the ground looks like underneath grass or flowers so that might be a potential use for this particular piece of paper. The second one I did was the BFK Reeves white watercolor paper. And for that one, I used the Liquitex clear gesso and I blended in a couple of drops of the golden fluid acrylic yellow ochre and did kind of a golden under toned painting, underpainting, um, and then I added in a couple of drops of a red that I have into that mixture and it kind of turned this brilliant orange um, and then I used the brush of course just to make these textural marks which if I zoom in you can see more of and those are kind of fun. Usually when I do um, a paint, an underpainting like this or a wash like this, a lot of times I will leave this paper, pieces of the paper or different textures showing um, through the pastel by layering gently over it. Or I just won't cover it at all in some places. Most competitions that you enter in the pastel world um, have to be at least 80% dry pastel so some of this could show through a painting because it's very pretty I must say so myself and I did so there um, the third piece I did was pa a piece of light gray pastel mat that's what it started as um, I had a little bit of that red yellow and clear gesso mixture left in my container 
So before I applied that though, I took a bright yellow new pastel and just scribbled all over the piece of paper. And so the places where you see this bright orangey color, that's the yellow coming through. That's the yellow being smeared around with that red yellow blend that and that darkness right there. That's what you call I didn't clean the yellow pastel before I put it on the paper and looky there. I've got a nice ugly dark mark on my beautiful piece of paper. But um, I always have dark areas in my paintings so I will just make sure that whatever painting I do on this piece of paper will have a dark area about there. I feel like a weatherman right there. Anywho, so those are the three paces the pieces of paper from earlier today that I toned and in a subsequent video or videos I will put some pastel to these pieces of paper and see what kind of paintings we can come up with. Thanks again for joining me on this first foray into the video world and um, it's fun. Ciao!